Oh, uh, okay. Joe, by the way, I'm Kath Anderson. I'm the president. And uh, very, very happy to have you come and join us today on July 28th, 2002. No, 2022. And uh, Margie, thank you so very much for uh, setting this up. And I hope we will have more people uh, looking at their emails and figuring out what we need to do. Hello, Lynn. Doris. Hello. Great. I'm glad Doris was able to finally join in with us. And uh, I won't want she drinking. I want what she's drinking. <laughs> want it. Yes, I want <laughs> I think I better mute. People are going to be jealous. <laughs> or not mute. Turn off my video. <laughs> uh, and somebody's driving and watching at the same time. <laughs> That's Lynn. That's I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually a passenger. I'm not driving. My husband's <laughs> doing the driving. <laughs> Being responsible. Hello, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what a uh, great group, Jason. <laughs> uh, make me laugh. <laughs> so you want to give it a couple minutes or you want to uh, start yakking? Well, we could start by looking at some of your work. Yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff. To, is anybody painting tonight? Uh, are you painting in the car tonight? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm on the way home, so I'll be there soon in my studio. <laughs> Because if, any, if anybody's painting, I have a thing that uh, you can follow along, kind of, sort of, because all the stuff I'm going to show you is uh, basically the same process. And we've, Margie knows we've been doing this forever. I'll put down so. my pastel painting and put up the watercolor block. That sounds oh. Oh, Okay. Yeah, it doesn't take much. You can do what I'm doing. Uh, you can do it with uh, a Sharpie, piece of white paper, and a gray marker. Oh, that's uh, awesome. you, you can do it with your uh, old pads, your uh, the brown, you know, that the back of the pad. Don't throw that away. That's a good mid-tone. So just okay. use some black, black and white gouache, and you can do that. Uh, but the problem that I see with most people is uh, this whole thing tonight when I when Margie said design is everything uh, if for me it is and first is the design and drawing those are the two biggies the two big D's and uh, then comes value value is a subset but it's very important uh, what value is that shape and uh, it's not about the color it's about the value of color i don't care what color it is i can make it anything i want i'm an artist uh, right. i have license so it's the value of the color it's not necessarily the color and that's later and edges that's later so it, that goes back to where do i want you to look where do i want the viewer to look so anyway uh having said that I'll show you some things that I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you some things that um, uh, I'll just, I've got this set up over here and we can actually paint something uh, later, but uh, I want to show you this right now. Uh, this is my uh, setup mm -hmm. and I have a separate palette when I do my Zoom workshops so you can see how I mix color and then uh, whatever I'm painting. So let me go here. Using watercolor or gouache? Oh, I use a transparent watercolor most of the time, but I, I was okay. trained in, in gouache uh, I, at art at art school. So interesting. Uh, I'm gonna show you several e examples of um, uh, how I start a painting. And to me, it is well worth it uh, because uh, I'm a designer more than a painter. So I have to make sure this works. So I do this, uh, I call it a three value noton. So I have a light, I have a midtone, and I have a dark. And okay. if, if I like that design, then I'll go ahead and paint from it. Uh, so I, I did this first. And I just painted the mid-tone and the dark all as one shape. So this was all 
one shape. I could, not, I could not see the swan yet. I could see a little bit of paper or white there and some here, but that was my big connected shape. Are we, and, are we supposed to be seeing something, Joe? Or is yeah, anybody else seeing what you're- You should be seeing my, you should be seeing my screen. I'm seeing it. I can see it. I, I can see it. <laughs> Anyway, so this is my uh, value study, and mm -hmm. this is the painting, and this was just a quick demo, and I just used uh, complementary colors, uh, purple and yellow. Okay. And, and I could get uh, great neutrals out of those because they were complementary. And uh, so I just followed what I did here. The first thing I did was paint mid-tone, and then I went back to this one, and I painted the darks, and mm -hmm. then I went and I finished up painting the darks. So that's just a very simple uh, example of my process. Because if I don't like this, I can paint gouache, I could use white tape, I could use pastel, I could use pencil, I could use anything to get this to the point where I liked it before I even start here. I like the design and the values and the shapes. Uh, I'm gonna show you several things. Uh, here's one uh, that um, I did for class, and um, so this was all all midtone. I include when I first paint, uh, I include my darks and my midtone in one big midtone shape. I don't I don't put the darks in yet. And then uh, the first thing that I do is I paint the white. Anything that's white, so this whole thing is is white paper. That's a white square rectangle right there. So I'm going to get rid of the white paper and I'm gonna paint basically light. So there is the color version and I did a wet and wet and that's my first step. So all this was just this uh, warm color, some purples, color running into each other. Uh, it doesn't make any difference, but it is only this far on the value scale right there. Mm -hmm. Once I get that done, uh, then my mid-tone runs all the way through here. And that's when I start painting this big connected shape. Color is going into other colors. And uh, I paint this uh, background wet on wet. I paint this wet on dry. I can control it. I want that uh, found edge, that hard edge. Then I go put my darks in, and then I put my darks in down here. And I'm going to show you several of these that I've had uh, in class. Uh, so the first thing I did was uh, I had a photo, and I figured out uh, what was my big shape. What was I going to leave light? And what was I going to make? And this was a, a interesting one because it's low key, it's sunset, but I had to decide to make these buildings work and these the rest of it and this light. Uh, I had it side, so I left all that white, and then I painted a big um, my big mid tone shape. I did not paint the darks yet. So the first thing I did here was paint that big wet and wet wash depicting the light. Then I let that dry. Then I painted mid-tone, all mid-tone, letting color run into color. And uh, then I went back over to here and I painted my darks. And that and then I that told me what to do here. So then I painted my darks. And I use the darks. I think a good way to look at it is I use the darks for definition. Oh yeah, that's a car. Oh yeah, that's a thing. Oh yeah, that's a whatever. So anyway, uh, these are all painted the same way. Um, this, this, this is uh, what I did a workshop on. I just had a workshop on uh, uh, shapes and values. So, so I gave them a photo reference on this. And the big deal is if you're using, there's three types of there's three types of the uh, reference that you use as artists, in my view. And the first one is photo reference or uh, art reference or anything that's uh, 
uh, printed or Googled, anything like that. Uh, the second one is uh, the second one. <laughs> the second one is uh, life. So I'm painting from life. And the third one is imagination. So I have to look at this uh, reference and say, okay, I got to break down the shapes. I know what the light's going to be in this case. So what is going to be my overall uh, mid-tone and dark shape because I want to connect that. And that's going to tell me how to paint this. And a very simple one is an elephant. So if I took that dark away, I could still tell that was an elephant, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, I paint a shape and I can let the colors run into each other. And then I go back and I say, oh, yeah, that's an ear, that's an eye, that's a shadow. I can tell where the light's coming from. Blah, 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 blah. So then I go back down here and do the same thing. And these are very quick little studies. And uh, it really is uh, pretty cool. Uh, if you just do some of these and they don't take very long uh, to just, uh, you'll grow by leaps and bounds, I think. It's going to be fine. So, uh, so we were doing a still life. Uh, I've been doing creative themes in my classes for the month. And uh, so I want to broaden everybody's creativity. So we took a very broad theme and it's still life. That could be anything, anything. And uh, by the way, then we did weather and now we're doing living things. So it's very broad. I, I want to see what everybody comes up with. Anyway, so I did this and this was all gray. That was all my midtone. So I went and painted all my midtone. Then I went back and I defined it with darks. And then I put my darks down here. So uh, it's a pretty effective way to paint. And it's also a great way to paint because you could consider this your warm up. This does not have to be a, a great painting. This is just an indication. You can spend your time doing stuff down here to click it up and whatnot. But um, this helped me a lot doing this. And I'm not saying any of these are great paintings. I'm just saying that I learn something each time I do these, and I've been doing it a while. When, when you did the white in that last painting with the grapes, did you uh, put anything on to preserve the white, or did you paint around the white? Like the oh, one no, I, just, I just painted around it. Okay. I, I just, I, uh, when I painted my mid-tone, this is all a lot of mid-tone. This is mid-tone, mm -hmm. this is light mid-tone, this is dark mid-tone, yes. I, I paint light to dark in uh, watercolor though. Okay. So I, I painted all the light stuff first and then started getting darker, darker. And I, so I went from a light mid-tone to mid-tone to dark mid-tone. And this, uh, this is just a white gouache. But then I had an interesting decision here because all these grapes are light, right? Mm -hmm. But this one, darker than the background, these guys. So that helped me figure out how to paint that. And then of course I added spatter, which is uh, made it more arty. So here's typical, uh, here's a photograph from uh, Central Park or I, I'm calling it Central Park. So how would I paint this? Oh my God, look at all that information. How do I simplify that? Well, uh, I did it uh, via Photoshop or whatever, but uh, I would recommend that if you have a photo from one of your photos or something that you got off uh, Pixabay or Google, try to squinch your eyes and I see a dark shape. I see a dark shape. I see some dark. I see some light. I see some light. I see some light, light that's connected. And uh, the rest is midtone. All the rest is midtone. So this is the way I started painting this before the, if you can imagine that being all gray. And then I painted uh, the same thing uh, here. I painted my back, my wet and wet light first. Then I painted my midtone over it. And then I added my darks. I added my darks here first to tell me what to do here. So that's just another example of uh, of 
this process or the way I like to paint. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, this. And uh, so this was another thing from uh, class and the workshop. So uh, now this involves a little perspective, but it's one point, so it's not too bad. So that's that fence. It's all going to go right to the top of that guy's head. Interesting. I didn't plan that, but that's where it goes. Uh, so there's there's my key point. So that's going to tell me what this path looks like. And the rest of it is just technique. It's just a bunch of spatter and uh, however you want to paint it, just let it go. Remember what I said about uh, painting this uh, uh, white first? That's uh my first part of the process, you can't even tell what it is. It could look like a mess, but uh, it's it's getting rid of the white paper and it's painting light basically. So uh, here's an example of that. This is my first, uh, this is my wet and wet process. So I'm just trying to say fall because that's what this says to me. So to make it clear, clearer, that was my first step. And then I'm going to paint mid-tone over this, which is the bulk of the painting. And then I'm going to end up with uh, the mid-tone, add the dark. And then I have, a, I have a painting that makes it much, much easier to uh, come up with something. It has some drama. It has some power. It has some uh, life to it because uh, I'm, I'm using the values. I'm using this uh, Noton study. Uh, for my shapes and values. Anyway, maybe that will make it, uh, that makes it a little more clear. I have another example of that, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and it works Joe, on- Joe, Joe, this yes. is Kath. So you said something like you paint the white. I mean, aren't you just leaving the paper blank or are you actually putting white in? No, no, no. I'm not using uh, any white paint. I'm just, I'm using the paper as my white. Okay, thank you. My light. And again, I'm using, I, I'm only doing that much high key, that much on the value scale when, that, when I first start painting. It'll work on anything, even a rooster. <laughs> <laughs> They're all shapes. Uh, here's one I did. Uh, somebody wanted me to uh, paint this. And I actually, if you guys want me to send it to you a link, I have a YouTube uh, video of this. That this is Evelyn. And uh, somebody wanted to know, how do I paint that? And uh, here's my painting of that. Oh, that's and, beautiful. And uh, this was all uh, gray, which I'll show you. Mm -hmm. And then I added the, uh, and then I painted all this mid-tone and it could be dark mid-tone. See this dark right here? You thought that was dark, but it's not. This is dark. So I waited until I got done to paint that. Um, so uh, what's really beneficial is I wanted to make this connection. I did not want to define that. I wanted to make that connection to the background and just let it float because I wanted people to look here. Everything goes to here. And you're going to see that if you see a human face, anything human living, you're going to gravitate toward, uh, even if it's uh, off value, uh, because it's a living thing. Anyway, if you guys want me to, I can send you a link to uh, me painting this. Oh, absolutely. That would be okay. delightful. Anyway, uh, so that's a kind of a, a pretty good look at it. Uh, here, here's one if somebody wants to paint tonight. Uh, I'm going to use this as a reference, and this is from this is from a photo that's that big. <laughs> I'll show you it, uh, and I'll show you my start on this. And I did this little uh, value study, and I ended up I painted this three times now, and I like this the best hmm. uh, out of all the paintings. In fact, I was showing somebody how to paint this. So I painted that wet and wet, uh, very light in value. Uh, I was painting light. And then uh, they were finishing up. So I said, oh, I might as well knock some stuff in here. So I just started painting quickly about 10 minutes. 
And uh, so this is probably the one I like the best. I like both of these better than, than these. I mean, I like this one, but uh, I just like the spontaneity or the, the immediacy of the other stuff. And I'll show you how I started that one. So that's going to be back to that light uh, thing. Uh, here's something that, that you see. I love to paint in uh, black and white because, as I said, I think of myself as a designer. So here's some stuff I actually did in an Andy Evenson workshop. And uh, I think I have that shot. Yeah, here's somebody running on the beach. There's a dog, whatever. So what I can do as a designer, uh, first of all, those are too far apart. That's not telling a story. <laughs> this guy is getting lost, right? And uh, he's getting lost over here someplace. So I wanna bring these two elements together and uh, I wanna highlight them because look at all the contrast right there. So I changed it to this and you don't have to do a, a great painting, just block in the big shapes. Uh, so this is what I ended up with and I think it's a better design than the, uh, whoops, I think it's a better design than the photo reference. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is just a little uh, farm scene from Minnesota, and uh, uh, it, it captures the, the mood, I guess, um, and it's done with, uh, just speaking of edges, uh, there's, some, um, there's some lost, uh, there's some uh, found, uh, here's some broken edges, and uh, uh, lost and found, it's kind of in here. Anyway, there's four types of edges, uh, hard, soft, lost and found and broken. Here's another one, uh, here's a better pro probably example of that, lost and found uh, and uh, soft and hard and uh, broken, a little bit of broken. Anyway, uh, these are so much fun to paint, uh, to just capture the, uh, whatever you're using for reference. This is a much uh, easier one, actually. It's just a bunch of shapes. I've got some mid-tone shapes. I've got sky and water. And uh, then I've got some dark shapes, defining what to do, what to paint. So where was and, that one you just showed us? Is that looks like Taiwan or someplace. Like China. Or China. Now the one before. Yeah. Well, now that, but the next one with the the big, yeah, this one. This one? This <laughs> one? That one. <laughs> uh, uh, it's uh, uh, in, uh, I think it's in China. Is that Kuiling? Well, it looks like Kuiling. It's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, the, it's Asia. It's in the islands over there. Mm. It's in, uh, I can say, <laughs> Bali. It's just a tropical uh, whatever, but I just like the shapes. Huh. Yeah, they're great. Anyway, uh, so there's that, but see, I do these things all the time. So here's a piece of mid-tone. So don't throw this away. So I mm -hmm. just use black, black and white gouache. And I just did a little painting and these guys are all gonna be, there's a monks going into a temple so this is all a bunch of neutral, but these guys all have orange uh, robes on. So I love the sweep of that being uh, orange. <sighs> so that goes back to uh, design. And then uh, last of all, I had a uh, theme for class and it was a lighthouse. And so I gave them a photo to work from and they had to do a uh, line drawing uh, they had to do a uh, line and wash, and they had to do a uh, watercolor, however they paint. Uh, so I did the, all of these first. They're all exactly the same drawing, except uh, this was more like the photo. Uh, mm -hmm. It had this backlit uh, sky. And uh, this I made at night, uh, moonrise, because it was a lighthouse, for God's sake. So I wanted it to be lit. And uh, this was from the light coming from here. And this was uh, from the light coming from down here. So I could pick any one of those 
or all of them. And I could say, okay, now that I've established my values and shapes, uh, is it fog? Is it a uh, winter? Is it uh, summer? Is it sunset? Is it whatever it happens to be? You could do that because I've figured out my values, my, my uh, shapes and values, right? So now all I'm doing is figuring out a uh, palette and edges and stuff like that. So. Anyway, I love so, that night. Uh, so do you guys have any questions on any of this stuff? Uh, let's see. Oh, the weather thing that I had. <laughs> so uh, weather, that's pretty broad, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of, instead of doing one painting, I had uh, fire, drought, uh, storm, tornado, lightning, rainbow, blue sky. I put a bunch of reference in my cluster uh, folder. And uh, so everybody kind of was, uh, they were kind of trying to understand what I meant by pushing the creative part of it. So I actually painted one painting. I painted five out of the six. There was my lightning storm. There was my blue sky. Uh, here was my storm with the rainbow. Uh, uh, that was uh, rain and this was drought. So anyway, it was uh, quite fun. I thought I'd share that. I love doing these guys in this size. This is a great little, great little book. I filled a, a lot of them now. And it's really good paper, but you can't get it. <laughs> of course, it's sitting on a boat someplace. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Arteza and it, it's expert uh, paper. So this was a little painting that we were doing of a sunset with lake and rocks. Here's another view of it. Here was uh, sunlight coming through some snow covered trees. And, so is uh, that a five by seven size? It's a five and a half by eight and a half. Five and a half by eight and a half. Okay. What weight yeah. is that paper? Uh, it's 140 pound. It's very, uh, it's very thick. It'll take a beating, and it's just like painting on. It's a really good, uh, really good to paint on. I filled several books like this. As a marking, I think. Anyway, uh, oops, I forgot my. I forgot my reference. The ones that I like the best are, is this guy, that guy from that photo. I like that guy. Oh yeah. This, this yeah. has a much more life to it for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me, let me show you a couple of things that I was talking about on the uh, computer. And this guy in particular, uh, so how did I get to, how did I get to this painting right here? And uh, so I went from that, of course, but um, it's a three-step process for me. So I'm going to paint the, uh, the white of the paper. That's my light. Uh, and I'm going to do that first after I do my value study, which is that. So there's my value study. And uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is do this. I'm gonna paint this wet and wet. So that's how, I don't know whether this is the same one, but that's how they start. Oh, okay. And I'm just like, I can't tell what that is yet. Squint your eyes, what the hell is that? Uh, I know that uh, I want warm and cool. I want the, to uh, draw you in. I want the light coming from the left. So I'm gonna warm it up. I know I want some, uh, if that's green, I want to put red behind it uh, for a compliment. Uh, this is a piece of tape that I left for that uh, strip that I didn't have to worry about trying to protect that. And it was, uh, I didn't need mask, uh, piece of tape is fine, low tech. Uh, this is a wipeout with a Kleenex when it was drying. So there's my, uh, whoops, there's my uh, light source. And uh, the rest of it is just uh, blues, purples, warms. And I put these trees back in here while it was drying, while it was still damp. 
uh, just because uh, when I put the trees over that, it gives me layers. It gives me a depth to the tree. So this is what I was talking about as the first uh, step. And the st second step, I don't think I have, I think it's on the video, but uh, it's when I paint the mid-tone and the mid-tone can get quite dark and it can get uh, quite light. Uh, you got a very broad range in the mid-tone and I found that uh, the more I paint, the less dark I need, the less actual dark, dark. I mean, it looks dark until you actually paint dark on it and then it's not dark anymore. So that's kind of the way uh, I started with these guys. And I don't know if I have, oh, here's a, so if I have an example of this, so this is the uh, park, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's my reference. Now, the big deal for me is shape recognition. Uh, that's the secret of painting as far as I'm concerned, as far as, and also squinting, of course. Uh, so that's my shape recognition. Can I squint my eyes and can I see light shapes and can I see dark shapes and everything else is going to be mid-tone. So here's what I mean by connected shapes. I'm going to paint this first uh, after I paint the light part. This is my mid-tone and I'm going to paint this uh, and it includes all the uh, mid-tone and the darks. So that's my big connected shape. Uh, it's connected all the way through and I can let, especially with watercolor, uh, I can let colors flow into colors and salt and plastic wrap and a uh, spatter and anything I want to do. And here it is uh, after I add the darks. So uh, I'm painting this first. Now I've already painted the light. Now I'm painting the mid-tone and now I can define it by painting darks. And then I end up with something kind of sort of uh, like uh, this. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that's all I'm trying to do. And they're very quick little studies. And I think that uh, I even have one. Yes, there was my start. This is the light part. So there was my start. I can't tell what the hell that is, but it's kind of interesting. It's pointing me in a direction uh, and uh, so it's kind of an abstract painting. So you can see how easily you can paint mid-tone over that and make something out of it. So, but that's the that's the start for these. Joe, those two black yeah. and white images you have there, did you do that in a computer? Uh, these I did, yes, but uh, I, I try not to do that. I try to do this. Uh, here's that uh, scene that I showed you that is that uh, night uh, sunset in the city. So now I have to go through this and I'm going to paint all everything that I see as mid-tone or dark. I'm going to paint as uh, one shape and that's going to be my mid-tone shape. I decided to leave the sky white so I could actually see the buildings and this part of the street white. And so this is what uh, I ended up with. This is what my uh, eye told me to paint. Can you see how I was doing shape recognition? I did add darks in here, so switch, switch your eyes and make those go away. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, and here was my uh, painting uh, follow, following that uh, procedure or process. Anyway, uh, it was quite fun to try to figure out how to do. Yeah. Joe, so, this is Lynn. It's interesting because in watercolor, you're going from light to dark, whereas in pastel, we go dark to light. Right. So in some ways, I mean, people say watercolor is harder, but in some ways, being able to paint all the, the mid tones and then put the darks on top of it seems a little easier than you can't put a dark on top of a light in pastel because it just gets it just doesn't look oh. good yeah but it's a that's the conundrum in watercolor that's yeah. the reason my my favorite medium is uh gouache mm, i love that too it's nice is because uh, i can put light over dark dark over it doesn't make any difference i can go back and that's what coming from the commercial art side I had to because uh, they had changes and it was due at nine o'clock in the morning. So, 
Uh, I'll run through a couple uh, more of these. This was a very simple one. And here was my, I can send you the, if you want me to send this handout to you, it's, uh, it's seven or eight pages of stuff like this. Now I did this uh, as, uh, this is what I send out for workshops. So I took the surfer and I did a three value of that just to see what, how it broke down the same with the elephant for reference. And then, uh, then we painted. Uh, then we painted that. So here's my uh, surfer, and uh, so I figured out what's midtone, what's dark, what's light, and then I could paint accordingly. The same with the elephant. Um, and I just, I think I showed you all the park thing. Uh, here's something that I was going to paint tonight, but I decided to paint the other thing. Um, but uh, that's, uh, I always like doing these. Can, can Now, can you break that down? Can you break that down for me in the big, uh, in, the, in the big shapes? Mm hmm Okay, so I'm not even gonna see this guy because it's, uh, it's, it's part of the mid-tone. I haven't put my darks in yet. And the first thing I'm gonna do is eliminate that rock because it looks stupid. So. <laughs> I'm going to make the sky white and I'm going to make this part here white and I'm going to make this white. I'm going to leave that as paper. That's one of my, that's my lightest value. I'm going to make all these mountains and this water, all this water, uh, the, all this shape as uh, my mid-tone. And then I'm going to add some dark here, some dark here. I'm going to finally paint the guy in the boat because that's all dark. And uh, a little dark over here, and I'm done. I mean, I figured it out. I kind of figured it out. Maybe I'll try one real quick just to show you what I'm saying by that. Uh, here was uh, Evelyn. Um, I'll put this away for a second. Here was Ella, Evelyn, and that was a pretty good shot, I think. So how do I break this down? If I'm squinting my eyes, I see a bunch of light here. I see a white flower rose but on the face I only see a little bit here and here and here I see some on the hair so how do I how do I do that well I do that by this mm -hmm. so that's actually what the, uh, that's shape recognition so now I that's all my midtone all my midtone all right yeah thank you Anyway, and this is my uh, three value. This is after I've added the dark. And this one, the dark is uh, pretty important. And uh, well, you'll see it when I paint it in the link I'll send you. Uh, but that I thought, uh, I think this is uh, the way to, this is the way I paint. Let's put it that way. This is the way I, I have my most successful uh, paintings. So anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of Evelyn and it's not about the color that that flower could have been anything. Uh, she could have had a different light on her. Uh, she could have had uh, whatever, but that's now you can kind of see how I got from here to here. Okay. I think this is something that uh, probably some of you guys uh, always uh, have already painted. So this is another uh, very quick uh, one. Uh, so there's uh, my reference and I'm squinting at that and I can see light back here. And I'm gonna make this whole thing light. All this green and sage color and that you know, ochre, I'm gonna make that all light because I want to see the shape of this diagonal, this hill. I wanna see that. And uh, so that water is going to be uh, uh, white paper. This is going to be white background back here. Maybe have a little tad. All this stuff is mid-tone. There's light mid-tone. Here's dark mid-tone. And this is mid-tone. Uh, and here's my reflection. That's dark. The trees are dark. So that's actually a pretty simple one. This is just a bunch of uh, technique. So can you guys see how I got to where I was going? <laughs> and uh, and the and the uh, the values uh, the value study is uh, not it doesn't have to be a great painting it just has to be enough information for you 
So uh, most of this painting is mid, and so that's going to be my that's going to be my midtone, right? So that's my midtone. I see a lot light back here. I'm getting rid of all this funky little detail. This shape is a white uh, shape. This shape is white back here. Some of these figures. Uh, here's my other uh, value, uh, my three value uh, noton. Now it makes no. Now it makes sense because I've uh, done done the uh, darks on it, and then that ends up with this is actually what I painted. I painted this one up here first, and then I followed this, and uh, I ended up with that. So anyway, does that make sense? Is, is somebody got their TV on or something? Can somebody everybody talk. mute their computers? I just hear somebody talking. You know, are, you, are you looking for high contrast scenes so that you can get definitive shapes or not? No. Okay. No, no that's your job. It's your <laughs> job to figure it out because you might have a high key, you might have a low key scene. I am not looking for dramatic high contrast scenes. I'm looking for anything that uh anything it's you you can you can figure it out some might be harder to figure out but that's the challenge if you have two values that are close like i have sky and i have hills oh which one am i going to make I, I can't make them both the same value right because then it won't be i won't see hills i won't see sky so I've got to make one light and one midtone could be light midtone but I've got to I've got to make that decision. Are they going to be white hills and a midtone sky or white sky and midtone hills? And I did that with the Malibu barn which uh, uh, Margie's familiar with. So here's an upcoming uh, a thing that I'm doing how to how to turn your photos into paintings. So this is a, a, a photo stands alone by itself. Oh, that's so beautiful, blah, 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 blah. Well, to me, it's too busy. And uh, I've got, actually, I've got several paintings in here. I've got a vertical right here with the sun coming through the trees. I've got a pan, uh, panoramic. Uh, I've got a square. Uh, I've got uh, a, a portrait. Whoops. I've got a portrait, which I uh, uh, could paint. Uh, and I've got just a regular landscape uh, pattern to that, a version of that. This is kind of how I cropped it because I wanted to simplify it. So I just took a crop out of uh, here. And uh, so that way I could make a dramatic sky and uh, I could simplify the whole thing and still keep the essence of uh, that marsh kind of thing. And that's how I ended up with uh, this. How do I paint that? Come on, baby. How do I paint that? I paint that by that. There's my little study, and I'd much rather I'd much rather paint these than uh, try to use Photoshop or a program. But if you want to use an app, uh, get uh, Notanizer. N O T A N I Z E R. It's only I think it's three bucks or five bucks. It's at the App Store. It's great. And it will also tell you when your painting's done. Is it done? <laughs> or or, or is, is, is there something that keeps gnawing at me that says, oh, it needs something, but what the hell is it? Well, you might find out that it's too much mid-tone. It's mid-tone, you're in mid-tone crisis. So <laughs> yes, going through my mid-tone crisis. So I don't know where to look because everything's mid-tone. I, I covered up all my uh, white paper in watercolor and I don't know where to put my darks. So uh, anyway, so I went from uh, that and this gave me uh, this. And uh, then that uh, gave me uh, this little uh, quick study, which uh, I still like because I like uh, quick uh, I like Lee, I like letting the viewer finish the painting. Uh, anyway, uh, and these are all uh, great fun to do and they don't take very long and you learn a lot by doing it. And I like to paint small because I learn faster. And I love to fail because I learned something. If I lucked out, <laughs> oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I could repeat it because I'm not sure what the hell I learned. 
I just did, uh, you know, I did 10 of these and I like one. Hey, my odds are going up. So anyway. Joe, can you, do you have available the show, the group weeks? We got back from uh, Arizona and I, I loved your uh, actually paintings from Bell Rock when you were, uh, you did some paintings there. Does that sound right? No, I'm not. Uh, a red a rock side of red, red rock. A side of it. Didn't you do some paintings? Uh, no, that's not ringing a bell. Okay. Uh, I haven't. I haven't been to Red Rock or Sedona for quite a while. Well, I've known you for quite a while. <laughs> Uh, it could be, it could be way in the recesses of uh, of my photo file. By the way, uh, for you artists, uh, if you want to sell your stuff, uh, the first thing you have to do is create content. I highly suggest you take a good digital shots. I'm doing uh, mine uh, 40 inches by 28 inches is a good proportion. I've got several, uh, I've got some other square proportions and whatnot, uh, a, a good digital image. And uh, that will build content for places like uh, Fine Art uh, America and uh, Shopify and Etsy. And uh, if you wanna sell them off your website or Facebook, or Wix or anything. So uh, anyway, uh, and also uh, I just discovered Fine Art America and uh, I have not used them. I know people who are using them, but if you just wanna paint and you don't wanna do anything, you don't wanna sell, you don't wanna negotiate with a client, uh, you don't want to uh, take care of the printing, uh, you don't wanna take care of the shipping, then you could use them. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't care if I get 25%, that's fine. I did it once, I'll sell it a hundred times. So I don't care. I wanna just go to my mailbox. I don't wanna be responsible for a pissed off client or a um, uh, expectations or a problem with uh, the print uh, or a problem with shipping or any of that. So I'm gonna try them just as an aside. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take this guy and, uh, oh, I was going to do this. Uh, was I going to do this one first? Yeah, I'll just show you this one real quick. So uh, I, uh, my printer is down. So I'll show you uh, if I can, if I can do this, uh, I will just show you quickly how I might do that. Get rid of all this stuff. Oops. And uh, I like to uh, tape it off because that gives me an instant mat. And I'm just using uh, one of those uh, little uh, books. Paper's great and it's 140 pounds so I don't get um, the wobblies. Okay, I'm going to try to uh, wish I had a printout, but I think I can do this. So the first thing that I see is I'm going to lower the horizon a little bit because I'm a rule of thirds uh, person. And uh, I don't like things going across the middle. So I'm going to lower that horizon slightly. And I'm going to leave uh, uh, that white line. And I could use a piece of tape. Uh, in fact, I think I will use a piece of tape just to show you. So there's my piece of tape and I will just uh, put it on here. And I think you can, oh, you can't see that because I'm covering it up. You can't say anything because yeah. I'm back on, <laughs> I'm back on my desktop. So here's the, here's what I'm uh, doing. And let me go back to the camera. I thought it was just me again, not seeing so. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, now you can see. Right? Yeah. Whew, there's a lowered horizon line. We're good. Good. 
Uh, okay, so I'm just going to cut a piece of tape and make my white line, and that way I won't have to worry about anything. So that's that's a fairly uh, thick line. Let's see if I can actually do this. I didn't rub that down. So here's going to be my uh, that's that sky reflecting. So there's my uh, there's my white line. Hey, good. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna make this. Uh, so I've got uh, I've got this uh, hill coming down here, and uh, I've got. I I. I'm gonna make this. Uh, I I don't like the uh, idea of these coming down in the same place. So I'm going to move that over a little bit. And then I've got another uh, hill coming down there. I like those two shapes. And then I've got some of these guys in the background. These are kind of uh, weirdy guys. That's good enough. Uh, yeah, that's good enough. Why not? And uh, then I've got this uh, reflection here, and I've got uh, the reflection off of this guy, that guy, that guy goes that way, so that guy will go this way, and this big um, mountain hill will go that way, and I can't even see that guy in the boat, right? I'll, I'll put him in, and I'm going to put him in about right here. Uh, so let's see. There's a boat. Here's a, I want this guy uh, breaking into there. So I'll just do this. He's going to break into that. And he's got something here and something coming down. I don't care about that right now because I'll paint that. Here's the light, uh, and here are the birds. Uh, anyway, I don't care about this guy yet uh, because, uh, let's see, I've got this. This is going to be light. And all of this is uh, uh, kind of sort of uh, ripply. So uh, I'm going to get out my paint. I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, leave the light. I've decided that this is going to be light, this shape right here. This is going to be light, and this is going to be light uh, down, uh, down, down here. Okay, Joe, Joe could you push your uh, sketchbook up a little higher? Yeah. yeah. And uh, all I'm going to do is say, okay, I'm going to mix up uh, kind of a fifty percent uh, gray, so I can see that that's all uh, midtone. I'm going to make this all midtone back here because I have my choice. I can't. I've only got three different values, right? So that's going to connect right to that. This is going to connect right to that. And actually, uh, this is going to go uh, down here. This is my, uh, this is a reflection from that guy. This is going to be the reflection from uh, that guy. And uh, I'll just give it a little, uh, uh, and uh, I don't even see this yet because this is this uh, reflection from here. So that's going to be, we'll leave a little white there. So I covered him up completely, right? And this is going to be a reflection from there. Yeah, it's not too bad. That's my start. And I'm going to connect, I can connect all those shapes. So that's going to be my sky, and it's going to be reflected down here. So uh, I got to let that dry. And you know, uh, what, take kind of, what kind of take pencil it, were you using to sketch that out with? Uh, to draw with? Yeah. I'm drawing with a call erase pencil, C-O-L-E-R-A-S-E. -E. It's by Prismacolor, and it's got chalk in it, and it will erase. Even though I put a uh, watercolor on top of it, graphite won't do a damn thing. But uh, this will erase. See, I've got uh, got pencil under here. That'll erase pretty much. 
almost all of it will erase. Even after, it comes, after it's it comes, wet. It comes, in, uh, it comes in several different colors, a bunch of colors. I just happen to use red because I like it. Anyway, can you see how I figured that out? Yeah. Okay. I'm simplifying it. Uh, another great thing about this is I'm simplifying. Anyway, I got to let that dry a little bit. So I'm going to take five minutes, okay? I have to get rid of some coffee. <laughs> okay, five minute break. Excellent. Yes, we can talk talk about you while you're gone. Perfect. Well, <laughs> we'll talk about all the cool tips that you've given us so far while you're gone. Actually, uh, Wanda said she was going to pour me a glass of uh, rosé. So <laughs> if she's still there, I don't even know if she's still there. But she did have a glass of wine. Anyway, uh, she's that's there. how she's giving you a toast there. That's uh, that's what I mean by shape recognition. <laughs> now, yes, there are other shapes in there. There are darker shapes, but I'm including. I've got two of my values here. I've got my light, my midtone, right? So all I got to do is add my dark, and I'm uh, on on my way. Well, he sure makes it uh, way easy. It's really it's clear. I mean, this is what every good instructor keeps hitting over and over, the no tan. I have the no tanizer on my phone and I've used it recently. It's really great to get those clear, clean shapes, but you know, like with watercolor, to me, it almost <laughs> seems easier to put the midtones down and then put the darks over it versus trying to find your darks first in pastel. Oh. I'm having to think backwards, but it's, such a good lesson in shape recognition and Absolutely. and values and three values. And I remember Desmond O'Hagan saying, force the decision, do two values, make it light and make it dark and have to decide. And that's what he's doing. He's deciding, but he's doing light and mid-tone and then putting the darks over it. But um, it's a very good exercise. And like I love how he's incorporated, you know, the value scale. And he's saying you're using this particular end of the value, very similar to what Stan Sproak brought up in the yeah. workshop that we attended. Yeah, the gradients of recognizing yeah. the values. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think if we did a watercolor underpainting like this for our pastels, even if it was just a black and white and gray watercolor underpainting, it would help inform our decisions when we go to put the color down of the pastel. Wow, somebody gets it. No. <laughs> when you listen to him. <laughs> Good comment. Uh, I'm just going to use my uh, big clunky brush. Uh, and this isn't the biggest one I use, but I like big brush, small paper. So I think this is kind of sort of dry enough. And so I'm just going to uh, put this dark in. And that's going to be all dark. And I see that uh, I've got my light. So now I can uh, come down here and there's some dark. And uh, this guy's dark. I don't have to get very fancy with this stuff. Oh, I made that go over because I did not want, this is back to a design. I didn't want that to be equal. So there's my, mm -hmm. there's my, uh, reflection, if you will. So that's already starting to look like something to me. And I'm not going to be, in fact, what I'm going to do, I think, is I gave the kids all the Sharpies. See if uh, they're still, well, you can do anything you want with this. So uh, I'm going to uh, say, okay, here's going to be this. And uh, then that goes on up. And then I've got this uh, torso of this guy uh, fishing. And oh, so uh, you're using the Sharpie touch there, Joe. I like that. Well, why not? I can get yeah. more ac accurate. Uh, that's up there a little bit. And then I've got a couple of birds. And then I've got this guy. And then I've got this uh, net. Uh, and then I've got uh, some 
reflections. And I'm, I'm not putting in that stupid rock. A little reflection, a little reflection. And um, this is more than enough to, uh, for me to say, okay, uh, I put my finger in the paint, so. Uh, I don't want you to get uh, too detailed with this. So now I'm gonna take that uh, white uh, tape off. And uh, now I can uh, kind of complete uh, this guy and uh, take my tape off to see what I've got. Uh, if I wanna, if I want to, uh, just for a reminder, uh, so I'm going to say, okay, I've got a little sky over here, so I'm going to use a little mid-tone, uh, and I'm just going to put that. So that's going to hold that corner. So I can see the shape of my uh, painting. So that's, uh, that's a, quick, uh, a quick study in uh, how I would figure this painting out. And if I don't like this, or if I want to change something, uh, I can uh, use white pencil, I can use marker, I can use pastel, I can use whatever I want to use. Uh, I can go back with, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of weird. And uh, yeah, I need a light right here. And that light, in fact, I could use white paint. In fact, what I think I'll do, is uh, you could also change the uh, time of uh, day on this. Here's my, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a little something here. So I'm going to uh, make that uh, more mid-tone right there. Why did I do that? Uh, because I'm going to have a uh, white light. I'm gonna have a light on there. In fact, I think I'm even gonna make it a little darker. I'm a master of the universe. You all are masters of the universe. So you can do uh, whatever you want to do. Even though this is still wet. Uh, now I can take a little dot of uh, white paint just for me. This is for me to, uh, if I can find a brush, this is just for me to uh, go from. So there's my that's not dry, but see if I can actually get a white dot. Yes. That's enough of one to remind me that that's a light because they all have those little lanterns on their uh, boats. So that's probably enough for me to say, okay, do I like that design? Do I like those uh, shapes? Uh, and I think that would make a, uh, let's make this a little darker. And this a little darker. And so I like this, uh, I like squeezing it. This guy's not in the middle, he's over here someplace. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna let him go. Whoops, what happened? Did I dip that in water? I don't know. Anyway, I don't care. Uh, that thing is in the right place, whatever that is. So there's my quick little study for uh, trying to recognize some shapes. And when I start painting, yes, all these will be connected. Uh, I could start that painting with, uh, uh, in fact, how long do you want to go? I, if you I can do a little bit more, we'd love it. Yeah, because we got a late start, let me dry this real quick and I'm just gonna uh, show you something here. Uh, I don't think we're gonna... I don't think we're, uh, because the other one takes a lot longer. Anyway, let me just show you on this one, how I, the process.
and uh, then I'll send you the uh, handout and the links for that shapes and uh, values. You can all see the reference, right? Yes. You all, you all can see that. So I'm just gonna cut another uh, little strip. Of, uh, actually, I don't need to do that on this one because I'm painting light. I'm not gonna use this strip until I get done painting the light because uh, it's not gonna be white. It's gonna be part of the uh, atmosphere. I got my tape ready. I'm going to use Mr. Uh, I'm going to use the gravity machine because I want the watercolor to uh, work. And I'm going to uh, draw my, oops, there it is. I'm going to draw the same thing out again. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to make the horizon line a little lower. And uh, I had this big uh, hill coming down here. And then I, I think I had this one coming over to here. And then I had these uh, little uh, mountains. Doesn't make any difference. And then I had uh, this uh, reflection and that reflection and these reflections. And I had this uh, V right here which is gonna be down here. So that's part of that other mountain. And then I had the uh, boat, the boot. And that and something there. That's, a, that's a more than enough uh, to paint this from. So I'm gonna get some clean water real quick. And uh, I'm gonna wet this whole thing. So this is my wet and wet, and I'm actually just painting, I'm painting all the white, which is the whole thing. Uh, but I'm painting it, I'm painting light. So let's see if I can do this. Uh, let me wipe a little bit of that palette off. I do not want blue. That's how artists say blue. 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 Anyway, I'm going to wet this whole thing. So that's my wet and wet. So that's nice and uh, wet and the paint's going to move. And this is just going to be kind of an abstract painting. And so I know I want some uh, warm light. Uh, I want some warm light. Uh, oh, I might as well do the whole thing. I want some warm light through here. That's kind of warm. I kind of like that. Now I'm gonna add a little red because I see red in there. And uh, I see red, I see red. I'm gonna put some red through there. Gonna make it a little better. And that's all gonna flow down and make it, uh, it make something magical. I see I'm gonna have some uh, uh, red going through here. And then I'm going to get into some blue. And uh, I think, uh, oh yeah, that's pretty red up here. That's kind of cool. Anyway, that's going to be my uh, underpainting. And in fact, I think I want that to be a little bit uh, brighter on the, uh, yep. Oh, geez. Sorry about that. I've got some dark in there. Oh no, I've ruined it. I'll kill myself. Anyway. Anyway, that's my start. Wow. What a start, huh? <laughs> I've left some light. I've left this color uh, kind of run and drip into each other. Uh, I'll even make some uh, uh, purpley kind of color. 
Ultramarine and uh, Alizarin makes a good purple. I don't have purple on my palette. By the way, just for you guys, if you want to get into watercolor, uh, this is um, 12 colors, 12 tubes of paint uh, for $16. Usually one tube of paint, I'm being generous, one tube of paint would be 16 bucks. I, I, I like all this stuff that's happening. Look how fun that is. Oh, that's cool. I like it. Anyway, let me dry that. Okay, any questions? So this is how I would start any of these paintings. Just let it go. Just let it drip and run because this is my, this is only my uh, value scale right there. That's all I want. And as you know, or maybe you don't, uh, watercolor uh, usually dries lighter usually almost dries lighter. I'm going to have to dry that uh, because of, and by the way, uh, because you're master of the universe, you can pick this up and, and move it around and make it drip in the direction that you want it to go. I like that do-it-yourself gravity maker. <laughs> That's a, that's a high tech piece of equipment. <laughs> I just remember when we were painting and they were putting up another house with the red roofs that we would get the, the uh, bars and use them to prop up our boards on. This would make a great uh, underpainting for pastel. Yeah, it was. And it's uh, quite fun to do, actually. Oh my God, you might get hooked on watercolor. Oh. Okay, I'm taking a chance here. So I like that color underneath. I like it actually better than... Uh, um, really what nice. The, what the photo is telling me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so now that this is dry, I can say, oh, okay, that's kind of pinky up there. So let's try to make some, uh, I'll try to make some pink, some pale pink. Let's see. And I don't care what happens down here because that's going to be darker, right? Mm -hmm. So. No worries. Uh, this is uh, another mountain here and uh, another peak. You can be creative with this. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, and that's gonna go all the way down. And I don't care if it goes over here. In fact, I want it to go over there. And uh, in that, uh, I can say, okay, it's watercolor. Uh, so I can add a little uh, blue down here and let that mix and mingle. And uh, that's pretty red. Wow, that's really quite red. I'll just leave it at that. So I'm letting all this uh, mix, mingle, whatever. That's going to stay in the background. Now I'm into values. So I'm going to, while that's still wet, I'm going to put some uh, ultramarine over that. It's kind of cool. And in fact, I'm going to put that all the way along the bottom. And I'm going to make some, uh, that's kind of misty right back there. I like that disappearing. I'm going to use some uh, ultramarine and alizarin. And I'm going to make kind of a darker, darker color. And uh, instead of trying to paint these trees, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the shape because I can make the trees. I can just go back and I can touch. 
you make the trees go all the way down. And so Joe, huh. for the sake of the future colorist here, I mean, what size brush is that that you're using? It's, um, I don't. I'm just using a um, angled flat. It's, that's, that's all it is. It's an angled flat brush. But it looks like a beefy size. Is that like a 10? Oh, or? It's three quarter inch. Three quarter inch. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So uh, I kind of like that. And I see that this blue, I'm going to add a little uh, blue, a little pale wash of uh, blue, uh, maybe while that's still wet. So I've got the tape here. I'm just going to come up like uh, this. So that's going to put this guy in front of that guy. And then just uh, wash it out, pink. So I'm setting a mood. Uh, I could have gotten a little pinkier, but that's okay. And now I want to make a uh, blue. I want to make a. Uh, I'm going to use some burnt umber with that, just for fun. I want to neutralize it a little bit. Come on, burnt umber. I'm using cerulean and uh, burnt umber. I don't know if you can see that. I'm all over the place with my palette, but uh, so now I'm going to uh, make a dark uh, through here and I'm gonna make a little bit of dark through here. It's not quite as prominent. And I'm going to uh, take a swipe with the side of my brush uh, like this. So I get some of those uh, uh, sparklies on the water. That's kind of fun. So that's a, about another one of those lines that I was telling you about. Still got some um, of that um, burnt umber in there, but that's okay. And let's see, I want to I want that to be lighter but I want it to have some substance. And this uh, is this mountain coming down here. And that is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, leave a little bit of uh, uh, that glow right back here. And let's see, I need a little dark. I need something a little darker up here, right here. Whoops, too dark, uh, actually not. And I want to just uh, marry those two together, let it drift down. And uh, now I'm going to add just a little ultramarine to break this up a little bit. That's kind of fun. And I think I need a little bit more color. right through here. It's not too bad. So now I got to let uh, that dry. And uh, if I, I think I already did it on this one. I already painted the, the mid-tone first. If I were doing this, I would have painted everything as gray first, which I did. And then I went back and I added the dark. Before I added the dark, I would have done this first. That's my mid-tone. I haven't put the darks in yet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so now I got to dry this. Who are the experienced watercolorists among the group? Not me. 
Oh, now I could use pastel. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do this. Now I'm going to uh, add my darks. Wow. And uh, I'm going to kind of not make it dark, dark yet because I want to, um, I want to make sure that uh, I am being fairly accurate. And there's a bird, and here's a bird, and here's a guy. You know what? I think I'll take the tape off first. See what I got. I don't care if that bled. I just want some of that color. And uh, so there's a hat. There's a palm reaching down. There's some um, legs. And then that's going to be uh, Well, I really ruined this uh, Pentel. That's okay. And now I want to melt some of this. Uh, I'm going to melt some of this just by a clean, damp brush. Bring that together a little bit. And uh, especially over here, it gets uh, should be darker. Anyway, in fact, I'm going to make this because I want the light right here. I want the big contrast right there. And let me dry that real quick. And I think I can make this a little more uh, dramatic by adding a little more dark. And I'm going to just uh, be very uh, uncaring. I'm not going to care. That's the secret. Don't care. Just go ahead and do it. I took the tape off, but I'm still, uh, it's still going to be okay, I think. And uh, this looks like it's uh, darker over here. I'm even using a bigger brush. Kind of like that. I'm gonna add a couple of uh, little ripply guys in here. Oh, in fact, I think I'm gonna use a dagger brush. This is a, a dagger brush. It looks like a dagger sword. And uh, if I hold it at the end, I can uh, make some pretty good uh, wave motions, ripples. That, that's gonna stay pretty light, I guess. I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, kill this over here because I want to close the window. I wanna put the, push the curtain together uh, and so I can uh, squeeze uh, to make that the lightest part. So this is my, uh, I don't care what the photo says. This is my uh, artist master of the universe stuff. So now I can see that uh, light, light shape. And in fact, I think I'm gonna cool this off over here just a little bit, too much, no worries. Clean your brush, go over it again. That's good. Now that draws your attention to that. And then I could use a white paint or I could use a little um, pencil or God forbid pastel. 
And uh, so this arm, uh, whatever that is happening right here isn't quite right, but uh, that's okay. Here's my uh, light uh, and that might uh, be a thing happening there. I wanna do a uh, complete that boat just a little bit. There we go. And I wanna do a little swipe up in the corner uh, I think I want to uh, keep it warm, but uh, I still want to, uh, and then wash it out. Again, that's making it uh, come over to this side. And that probably should be yellow. Let's make it yellow. Anyway, so now I take the tape off and I see what I have because I can't see it without the mess. I mean, I have to see it without the mess. And I could do a, I could do quite a few of these. I could do three, four, five, six, and I could change it every time just to see what happens uh, with a palette or with a whatever. So anyway, there's my little uh, study, if you will. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. When I followed the process, I went from wet on wet to uh, wet on dry for my mid-tone and then I added my darks and then I'm kind of done. So if wow, that makes Wow, Joe, sense. beautiful. This, this is wow. That's beautiful. Yeah, talking. Wow. If that makes uh, if that makes sense to you guys, it's a pretty good way to paint, I think. It's a pretty good process. Anyway, uh, I'm anxious to see if anybody tries uh, the watercolor underpainting. I know Margie does some of that. I do. In fact, anyway. I didn't have any. I did try painting, and it wasn't too bad. And you made it look too easy. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, I've done a few of these, but uh, it's just uh, it's just doing it. It's just practice is really uh, the key to the whole thing is just, uh, that's why I love these little books because they don't take much time to paint. Uh, so I've got some uh, red pencil left here and uh, I just erased it. I've got some red pencil over here. I don't have much red pencil that's gonna show in this, but uh, anyway, you can get the idea, I think. So Joe, you said you had 12 tubes of paint for $16. What what brand was that? Or was that a it's I mean, uh it's actually Arteza. Oh Arteza, I, okay. I, I teach at uh, Cal Lutheran and uh, I'm trying to keep the uh cost down for the kids. So if they can get 16 tubes of paint and they're good sized tubes, they're not those little five milliliter tubes, mm -hmm. these are 12. And uh they come in. Uh, they come in this nice little uh, box. So if you want to get one of your buddies to paint who's never tried before, it's a really easy way to get into it. And I think you get three of these pads. Uh, they used to be three of these pads for like uh, twenty-two bucks. Uh, so it's really uh, uh, these colors. I, I I don't use. I don't use green. They give you two green sap green green and light green. I don't use them, but a lot of people do because it's easy. It doesn't have purple, doesn't have orange. You can make your own. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, they're, uh, they're, it's cool. You want me to send you the link or send Margie the link or uh, yeah, we, we whoever? I'm sorry? Uh, I can put it in the chat. We send oh, it to okay. Yeah, they're just oh. on Amazon. Uh, no, I think I got it from Arteza, but I, I think it's on Amazon too. It is. Yeah, okay, good. 
Oh, I see that hat is orange. Okay. I'm see, put I, in an orange hat. I always see something. So a little bit of that, a little bit of that. And uh, orange, orange, yeah. I was really careful with that, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know this. <laughs> you know, uh, the, the one of the biggest things for me is uh, what to know when I'm done is uh, if I've done enough to let the viewer finish the painting. I do not want to finish the painting for the viewer because I want the viewer to look at that painting a hundred times and see something a little different every time, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it does. So all I'm doing is, all I'm really doing is suggestion. And that was uh, pretty fast, but uh, you get the idea, I think, about process. Mm hmm So... Okay, I'm going to stop my share. I'm going to go back to see everybody. This is the study I have, Joe. Can you see that? Can I see what? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, here, uh, spotlight you. I don't know if I can pin. Yep, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, I remember. Okay. okay. Kind of sort of remember. And yes, there's the uh, I love crap. Yeah. I love cool. Vance you know that. <laughs> Where do you think this was? Oh, I have no idea. It was probably <laughs> off of uh, uh, Google. <laughs> it was probably from Google or Pixabay or Pexels. Or, uh, uh, I don't know. I like this a lot. And it, the reason I like it so much is because of, you know, I really loved going to Bell Rock back in the day and that part of the Grand Canyon area. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, this would be great to do underneath if I did a pastel. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, Plus, you know, I use pastel. If I'm painting a sky and I've got blue sky holes in a, a yellow sky, uh, I am not going to mask. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to paint the sky and I'm not going to let the blue and the yellow mix. And I'm going to go black with blue pastel, light blue, and I'm going to put in all the sky holes. Nice. Or if I want to bring up a color, uh, I can put a little pastel, rub it in with the palm of my hand. I, I wouldn't even have to tell anybody because it disappears. Or if I want to kill a color, I'm not going to go back and re-wet anything. It's death. So I'm just going to use a little pastel, uh, the complement uh, color, and uh, just rub it in. And by the way, uh, National Watercolor, they will say, yes, it's okay to do that. Good. So as long as it's like a 10%, no more than 10% of your painting. Also, I looked up the name of the boat. That's a D-H-O-W boat, Dow that you're painting. D-H-O-W. Yeah, it's in the chat. And the reason I know that is I watched Jeopardy the other night. <laughs> they showed a picture of that boat. I was like, oh, I should know the name of that boat. OK, guys, uh, any questions? Oh, Joe, it was such a fantastic demonstration. Thank you so much. Oh, good. I hope you. Wow. I hope you recorded it. You. So you can refresh it. We did. Good. Okay. Cool. Thank you okay. so much. This was great. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Thank you. Oh, this was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, now I'm totally inspired to add uh, watercolor and yeah. play around time with that. And uh, I'll be in contact with you for uh, some suggestions if that's okay. Sure. Okay. Great. Thank See you ya. so much, everybody. Five stars. Uh -huh. There we go. <laughs>